When we discuss bottlenecks in the New York City subway system, we usually talk about DeKalb Junction or Rogers Junction. Both junctions are notorious for causing major ripple effects throughout their respective divisions, as multiple lines from different trunks run through those junctions. There are, however, other locations that cause major bottlenecks. One notable instance of this is Parkchester on the 6 line. The bottleneck in question here involves the 6 local and 6 express services. Just north of the station, both services cross in front of each other, with the local crossing onto the center track to relay after terminating at Parkchester, while the express crosses onto the local track to continue service to Pelham Bay Park. In this video, I'll be explaining the bottleneck at Parkchester, and we'll be discussing solutions for this bottleneck. Peak Direction Express service started on the IRT Pelham line on October 14, 1946, when trains coming from Pelham Bay Park started to use the center track between Parkchester and 3rd Avenue, 138th Street. Back then, when express service was first introduced, it was a huge hit, with Pelham riders favoring express trains over locals, mainly because of the time save. Express trains saved riders nearly 10 minutes on their ride in the Bronx, and that was an enormous benefit for them. Throughout the years, however, with the introduction of timer signals and slow speed limits, the performance of Pelham Express decreased, with trains now moving slower and the time save becoming a negligible difference. This isn't exclusive to the Pelham line, however. Peak Direction Express service is a somewhat controversial topic amongst transit planners. Many peak expresses cause more harm than good, with some forcing horrible merges between express and local trains, and that it increases wait times for those who live at local stations. At Parkchester on the 6 line, merging comes into play, with express and local trains crossing in front of each other just north of the station. I explained this earlier in the intro to this video. What makes this merge even worse is that within the area of the interlocking, there are a lot of slow clearing timer signals which limit train speeds through it. This causes trains holding at Parkchester to wait even longer to receive their lineup to depart the station, which can lead to conga lines of trains just south of the station on the local track. There are many ways to fix the delays caused here ranging from reconfiguring the switches at Parkchester, converting another station into an express stop, or even eliminating the Peak Direction Express service altogether. The first solution we will discuss involves constructing a new flyover to the west of Parkchester, which would see trains switching tracks there. This would see express trains switching onto the local track before Parkchester, and local trains switching onto the center track, terminating there at the Parkchester station. Once the train terminates there, a new crew will board the train and within 3 minutes, the train would switch onto the downtown local track, heading back in service in the southbound direction. This is one of my favorite solutions to this issue, as it would allow us to keep peak direction express service and would allow trains to enter the station faster. The only issue I see with this is the price. Constructing an all new flyover or an elevated trackage might be a tad bit expensive. The second solution is to have express trains terminate at Parkchester while local trains continue service to Pelham Bay Park. We see a situation similar to this at Brighton Beach, where the B, the Brighton Express, terminates on the center tracks, and the Q, the Brighton Local, continues on to Coney Island. Implementing this service pattern for the 6, however, might be less than ideal, since many people living east of the Parkchester station rely on that direct express service to Manhattan. For them, it is essential to have quick service to Manhattan, without being forced to switch to an express at a later station. This might be one of those situations where you kinda just say, it is what it is though, as this solution solves the conflict at Parkchester while maintaining express service and it also doesn't require any new construction. The third solution involves converting Westchester Square into an express station and running the express to Westchester Square before running it local to Pelham Bay. Under this plan, locals would terminate at Westchester Square and relay on the Westchester Yard lead tracks. 
While I see the benefits of this plan, it is extremely costly, as you would essentially need to construct an entirely new station and redesign the track network near it as well. The fourth solution involves sending both express and local trains to Pelham Bay Park. This is possible, however, would require some major reforms to the way the MTA handles terminal operations. Currently, as many of you may already know, terminal operations within the MTA aren't really the best. Trains can sometimes take a long time to leave the terminal in the opposite direction, which can cause backups of trains near the terminal. We want to get a train out of the terminal within 3 minutes of arrival. This is definitely possible as a similar situation occurs at 34th Street Hudson Yards with the 7 train. The difference between 34th Street and Pelham Bay Park though is that 34th Street has tail tracks and trains can enter at faster speeds. Now we won't be able to increase speeds much coming into bumper block terminals, however I'm sure we can get a speed increase of another 5 miles per hour or so. Besides that, a good place to look at for improved terminal operations is London with the Victoria Line. As soon as a train terminates, there is an operator already waiting at the other end of the train, ready to take it back in the opposite direction. I think we should develop a similar system to that. This might require more operators to be available and to run more trips in quick succession. Deploying these types of terminal operations at all terminals throughout the system would not only be of use to us here, but also in other locations like Flatbush Avenue. The fifth and final solution sees us eliminating Pelham's Peak Direction Express service as a whole. I've seen some proposing this not only because of the delays caused at Parkchester, but also because of the increased gaps it causes due to service on the line being split between the Express and Local. This is another one of those plans that I somewhat agree with. The 6 Express just doesn't save that much time from Parkchester to 3rd Avenue, with the biggest difference being 4-5 to five minutes. Therefore, I see this as an alternative to the flyover at Parkchester, should it be too expensive. I do think, however, that with the elimination of Peak Direction Express service on Pelham, we should look into increasing the speeds of the many timer signals on Pelham Local, along with stop consolidation to lessen the impact of the removal. Overall, there are many ways to tackle the problems at Parkchester, and solving the issue here could open the door to resolving many other issues caused by merging around the system. In the comment section below, tell me what your favorite solution for fixing the 6 Express is. I would like to give a shout out to A320LGA on Twitter for analysis on the Pelham Line's Peak Direction Express service, as it helped me create this video. If you enjoyed this video and you would like to get more from Mystic Transit, like, subscribe and consider becoming a channel member. Special thanks to Stuart Guberman and Daniel Green for supporting me at the two Broadway tier and the Bronx Express Gaming for supporting me at the train operator tier.